Good evening, you're watching Kini News and I'm your host, Camelia. We've had a few Prime Ministers since independence, but according to an UMNO leader, none appear weaker than Ismail Sabri. Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaqub's handling of Zuraida Kamaruddin's ministerial post signals his weak position. This is according to Johor UMNO Deputy Chief Nur Jaslan Mohamed. He labelled the delay as a mess and claimed that the Prime Minister was being held to ransom by certain factions. Nur Jaslan said Ismail Sabri is unable to make decisions or assert his authority because he is being held to ransom by certain quarters. He added that the fact that he is dragging his feet shows that he could be buying time. Nur Jaslan highlighted that it's already been more than two weeks since Zuraida left Bersatu for Party Bangsa Malaysia and she is still in the cabinet. He was quoted by Free Malaysia today as saying that never has an AMNO Prime Minister been this weak in the nation's history. He said this while commenting on Ismail Sabri's silence on whether the former Bersatu MP would be swapped for another Bersatu MP, or if he would allow her to remain at her post until the next general election. Yesterday, Bersatu President Muhyiddin Yassin called on the Prime Minister to hasten his decision on Zuraida's cabinet post. He said that Ismail Sabri was free to retain the Plantations and Commodities Minister so long as Bersatu's ministerial quota remained. The case against Zahid Hamidi appears to have opened a can of worms. However, why did the MACC stop at Zahid? This is the question asked by a veteran lawyer. A lawyer has urged the MACC to reveal details on why investigations on bribes paid by Ultra Kirana Sindirian Berhad focused only on AMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi. In a statement, Hanif Khatri Abdullah said this was necessary to protect MACC's reputation. He said MACC Chief Commissioner Azam Baki and Attorney General Idris Harun should issue an official statement to bring clarity. Hanif was commenting on a Free Malaysia Today article yesterday which cited an anonymous source claiming that the MECC had investigated some individuals mentioned in a ledger kept by UKSB. The source who spoke on condition of anonymity said MECC had a few years ago looked into some of the names mentioned in a ledger kept by a former UKSB manager. Among others, the source claimed that Khairi Jamaluddin, Muhyiddin Yassin and a nephew of a former Prime Minister were among those investigated, but there was no case to be built against them. The MACC has come under fire for selective prosecution after several former UKSB directors testify at the Shah Alam High Court that they paid Zahir and several other political figures. After the outcry, the MACC vowed to investigate everyone named in a purported ledger kept by UKSB's bosses. The one MDB corruption trial against Najib got tense this morning as his lawyer clashed with former Minister Ahmad Husni, who is a prosecution witness in the case. Najib Abdul Razak's 1MDB trial got heated this morning with the former Premier's lead counsel and former Second Finance Minister Ahmad Husni Mohammad Hanatsla getting into an argument over how the latter dealt with documents related to 1MDB. The exchange began when Ahmad Husni, the 20 prosecution witness, repeatedly answered that all 1MDB documents were handled by Najib and he was just following orders. The veteran lawyer Mohammad Shafi Abdullah, who was clearly irritated by the witness's answer, asked him to explain what he meant. Shafi then told Ahmad Husni that he was quarrelling and not to be arrogant. Ahmad Husni then denied he was being arrogant, however Shafi once again called him arrogant. At this juncture, Judge Colin Lawrence Sequeira interjected and asked the witness to answer the question posed by Shafi. To this, the witness countered, quote, Your Honour, he is trying to put the blame on other people. To this, the judge said the prosecution will definitely give the witness the opportunity to argue later, and that he need not worry about that. Najib is facing four charges of using his position to obtain bribes, totaling 2.3 billion ringgit from 1MDB funds, and 21 charges of money laundering involving the same amount. Bersatu is not a part of Muafakat National simply because it's not sincere. This is according to one AMNO leader. AMNO Information Chief Sharil Hamdan has outlined why Bersatu has not been admitted into Muafakat National. He said this is because Bersatu has repeated attempts to undermine AMNO. 
In a statement today, Sharil said AMNO had a bitter experience cooperating with Basatu because the latter showed insincerity. He said this was proven during the Sabah elections in 2020, which saw Basatu field candidates against BN for 17 seats. He added that they also split the votes by fielding independent candidates, which eventually backed Sabah Basatu chief, Hajiji Noor, as chief minister. Sharil accused Basatu of deliberately attempting to undermine AMNO, despite AMNO giving up many traditional seats to Basatu. He said Basatu also showed insincerity by forming Parikata National, without any discussions with AMNO. After much confusion over the status of cooking oil subsidies, the Prime Minister thought he would need to address the nation himself. And he did, this evening. Prime Minister Isma Sabri Yaakub reiterated today that palm oil in 1kg poly bags are still subsidised and priced at 250 ringgit per pack. This had been stated by Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Alexander Nanta Lingi while announcing that subsidies for bottled palm oil would be discontinued as of July 1st. In a press conference this evening, Isma Sabri said there had been a lot of confusion and allegations that the government had withdrawn all subsidies for cooking oil. He explained that the subsidy for bottled palm oil was introduced as a temporary measure in 2020 to help the public during the COVID-19 pandemic. However, he said it had been abused by businesses and industries that took advantage of these subsidies. Meanwhile, Isma Sabri also reiterated Nanta's announcement that the ceiling price of chicken and chicken eggs will be terminated on July 1st and that this could result in a price hike. He said the government will offset the rise in the cost of living by disbursing additional Kaluaga Malaysia aid. The additions he announced include 100 ringgit for B40 households and 50 ringgit for singles. Before Ismail's surprise press conference, Harapan gave his government 24 hours to find a solution. Harapan has challenged the government to fully announce a plan to address the issue of subsidies and the rising cost of living within the next 24 hours. Otherwise, they said the relevant ministers must resign from their positions. The Pakatan Harapan Presidential Council said the coalition will also take several actions, including mass mobilisation to express the Rakyat's anger. The statement was signed by PKR President Anwar Ibrahim, Amana President Mohamed Sabu, DAP Secretary General Anthony Lok, and APCO President Wilfred Madua Stangao. The leaders said they are highly concerned about the latest developments regarding the rising cost of living following the announcement yesterday that the subsidies and ceiling price for palm cooking oil, chicken and eggs will be removed starting July 1st. Harapan said this will further add to the burden of the Rakyat who already have to face an economy badly affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. With Bersatu still wanting their quota in cabinet since Zuraida left the party, one MP has slammed any potential job creation exercise that would only benefit politicians. Lawmaker Wong Ka Wo has rubbished Bersatu President Muhyiddin Yassin's suggestion that a new ministry be formed. Muhyiddin made the suggestion in case Zuraida Kamarudin is to be retained in the cabinet. Wong said the suggestion was a job creation exercise that would only benefit politicians at the people's expense. He said the nation is facing an unprecedented price hike and yet Muhyiddin is only interested in creating a new ministry as a shortcut in handling the infighting for power and positions. Ampang MP Zuraida's departure from Basatu last month has prompted demands for her cabinet portfolio to be returned to the party. However, Prime Minister Isma Sabri Yaakub has yet to meet Zuraida or Muhyiddin to resolve the situation. The Bersatu president said yesterday that if Isma Sabri wants to retain Zuraida, that a new ministry could be created without touching the party's quota for cabinet positions. The cabinet under both the Muhyiddin and Isma Sabri administrations has 32 full ministers, compared to 28 during Pakatan Harapan's time in Putrajaya. The extra portfolios were created by splitting up several ministries in what Wong described as a job creation exercise. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, 
do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Camelia. Thanks for watching.